Hey YouTube. So, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know I like using this green tape to make patterns. So, uh, let me show you what's underneath here. So, from here, uh, actually, there's a I don't know if you can see this, but there's a hole in here that I'm not going to tear off completely, but I want to make one piece here. So, you can see there's a great big hole in here, this is rusted out. Somebody had some fiberglass in here or whatever. What I want to do, they also uh, covered over this seam that was in the original sheet metal, which I want to restore the seam. I, I want to see the seam, because even though I'm going to take these buttons out of here and weld them closed, and I don't know how you guys who love Jeeps look at that, but the woman said that uh, owns it that she could use the buttons on another Jeep that she has, which is fine, but um, I want to keep the seam in here. So what I'm going to do is, well, all I did was take paper as if I was wrapping something, and I basically followed that seam as well as the bottom and ran a, uh, the tape along the edges of the body line there where the fender is. So what I'm doing here, and I already used a piece of soapstone to mark it. Uh, this uh, marker doesn't quite do as nicely as I would like, but um, you could also use the edge, very edge of the marker to get that rounded body line that is the fender. Now there's a number of ways to do this stuff. I just like doing this because it's easy for me to take this pattern and put it on the workbench because at my age I'm sick and tired of laying like a contortionist in 50 different positions trying to fix stuff. So anyway, um, I want to cut this here. Up about this height is where the body is welded to an inner panel there. It's about this height. In here there's a hole and there's some places there where it's starting to rust. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a body panel that's this size, put this curve in it and that there's a, I don't know, half inch of metal going that direction in the bend. So I can put that in my English wheel after I cut the panel and I can uh, form that little bit of an edge there. That's not going to be a big issue for me. So that's my start. So I've got my pattern now. And because we have good metal up in here, all I'm going to do is grind it down, tack weld these holes shut, and I'll probably end up making the panel the same size as the pattern, but I'll, I'll make it shorter when I actually go to put it into place. So this pattern now, you can see where the bend will be. So I can follow that to make the bend for the inner fender there, or, you know, it would be like an inner fender, but the edge of the fender. And this pattern will be what I need to fit that. Now the only thing I want to make sure of, and I don't know how big it is, I want to make sure that I put a mark in here to add some metal over here. So I'm going to add three quarters of an inch because I'm not sure of what it is. So I'll just put add in here and I'll put three quarters along that edge so that I can turn that and make it go back in there because even though I'm going to cut it here and probably save this bottom here because actually the original fender, saving the original fender is not a bad idea. Although it looks like if I replace this all it might be better. So. And without buying panels, um, the metal that we have for this, I think, was $25, she told me, or a friend of hers brought me some. And the body panel, just for the apron in the back there, was 56 and I can probably make maybe six of those panels, six of those aprons out of that. So what we're trying to do here is we're not just trying to fix it. We're trying to fix it as cheaply as we can, but still have a nice job done. So we want some heavy steel here. Now I haven't measured this steel yet to see what size it actually is, but um, 
that's what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to make a pattern out of this. You saw how I put that on there. All I did was basically put the green stuff up there to paper, tape it in place, tape along the edges here. Now these holes that are in here, I can always locate them later. I don't have to worry about them, especially if I um, don't cut this out of here. I, I may very well just cut along the edge here and replace this. I don't know yet. It, with this being straight, it, you know, it's probably going to be just as easy to put a whole new piece in there. And then I can put a new piece on this side as well. Over in here. Over in here. And I should be in good shape. So for now, I, I've taken a grinder. <coughs> and usually I use 80 grit paper. But because this thing has gotten so many coats of paint on it. And all this body putty. I use this thing. This is a Milwaukee. It says 7 inch. 9 inch polisher so I guess you can get a 7 inch and the disc that goes on the outside for polish and paint is probably 9 inches but I got this uh, I think this is a 15 grit sanding paper so this sucker is really rough and you can see how it just tears right into this stuff and really you don't want to be fooling around with this if you're trying to do this with 80 grit sandpaper you will use 50, pe 50 pieces of it before you get you know to the point where you want to get to so I just use that and that thing is pretty nasty. I mean, you can see the That thing just tears right into that. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to have to, I'm going to make a straight cut. I think I'll make that cut about right here all the way along. Come over to my pencil mark where my pattern's going to be. And then I think I'll cut down and I'll make a new piece for that. That's what I'll do. But before I cut it out, I think I'll make the pattern first, the piece of metal. And then I'll decide how I want to do this. So that's where I'm at so far, guys. I'm going to try and keep you with me a little closer with the work that I'm actually doing because I know in some of my other videos, you know, one day I have, I say I'm going to do something and then the next day it's done and I really haven't had a chance to show with you. It's because this camera I have, it's a little Kodak, like $79 camera, and I hate to throw it away because it still works good. But anyway, that's where I'm at so far, so have a good one, and uh, I'll show you what I do as I go. Bye.